What's up guys, welcome back to another video on European Yu-Gi-Oh cards. In this video, I'll be picking up where I left off in the last one, starting with Spell Ruler 1st Edition. Now, Spell Ruler is easily the most well-known of all the European releases due to its infamous status as a factory error set, and that'll be the main thing that I talk about in this video. Um, so before I get into things, if you haven't seen my last video where I talked about the first few European releases, um, it'll be helpful for you to go back and watch that first uh, to get a better idea of the cards that I'm talking about now. First off, I'm just going to quickly recap what's been said about these cards in the past. So Spell Ruler has often been called a factory error set because the packs and boxes say Spell Ruler and the cards inside are also called Spell Cards, but the set code for each of the cards is still MRLE rather than SRLE which you'd expect from a set called Spell Ruler. And collectors realized along with this that the cards and the sealed product especially were much harder to find than the North American version. So it was assumed that the whole run was some kind of mistake due to the small quantities produced. Now, unfortunately, the majority of people who started these rumors were not well acquainted with European cards and their history at all. And so it led to a lot of false information being disseminated about them. Now that's out the way, I'm going to take things back to basics and just go through all the facts about this set from scratch. So Spell Ruler, or MRLE, was released in late 2003 in Europe. Uh, now, the release dates listed online for this set are all inaccurate, so I don't know exactly what the date was, but it was right around September to October of that year. And the release was, along with the 2003 tins in America, one of the first products to be printed after the name of Magic Cards had to be changed to Spell Cards due to a lawsuit with Magic the Gathering. Now, in the case of the Magic Ruler expansion, Konami had also decided to change the name, and so it became Spell Ruler. However, to begin with, they opted to keep continuity with the old set code, and so even though the booster packs were called Spell Ruler, the abbreviation remained MRL to begin with. Now, just to show an example of the North American version of this printing, I'm going to quickly get a Final Destiny from MRL. Okay, so here's the card I was talking about. Now, you can see that this Final Destiny is a spell card, uh, and this comes from the Spell Ruler Booster Pack in the 2003 tins. But if you look at the card code, it still says MRL 035. So even though they changed to Spell Ruler and they changed the names of the cards to spell cards, to begin with, they still kept the MRL code, and this is not a misprint. Uh, it was done on purpose to keep continuity with the earlier cards. And Konami kept the same approach for the release of Spell Ruler First Edition in Europe, uh, as you can see with this delinquent duo. Uh, and the important thing to note is that both of these releases, the 2003 tins and Spell Ruler First Edition, are before 2004, which is when Konami finally decided to change the set code to SRL, starting with the release of Master Collection 1 in 2004. Just before I move on to the next point, uh, I'm going to bring up one more thing which is pretty important about this set and which a lot of people do not realize, and that's to do with the unlimited cards. So what I have here is an unlimited spell ruler, Mystical Space Typhoon. Uh, you can see it's just like the first edition. It's called a spell card, but if we look at the set code, you can see it's MRLE047. Um, so even for the unlimited run, they still did not switch the cards to SRL. Uh, and that's another important way to see that the first edition cards are not errors. They're just how the set was decided to be printed. So that's one half of the Spell Ruler myth dispelled. Um, but the other reason to do with the rarity of the cards is what I'm going to address now. So it's definitely true to say that Spell Ruler first edition is a much smaller print run than the North American print of Magic Ruler. But it's not correct to say that it's short printed if you're looking at it relative to the other European sets. So the reason for the small print run is a combination of different factors. So most importantly, MRL e-cards were only produced for the UK market, which was far smaller than the market for Magic Ruler in the USA. And secondly, since the set was released in Europe over an entire year after it was initially released in America, the demand for it was much lower than the original release, since there was nothing new about the cards and many local stores had already begun illegally importing the North American print of the set for months, if not the previous year even. 
Uh, since everyone in Europe wanted the new cards and Konami was doing a terrible job of printing them compared to Upper Deck in the USA. So sealed MRL e-boxes, especially, I should say, do have genuine rarity nowadays because very few of them were kept sealed. Um, but that's no different to any other European release from this time. And in fact, the boxes are easier to find than they are for the following two sets, Pharaoh's Servant and Labyrinth of Nightmare. So putting everything I've said together, it should be fairly easy to see now that the labeling of MRLE as an error set is a misconception. However, there are still a few interesting things to note about the European release specifically. So the first is that the set does actually contain two unusual errors. So for these two cards, Relinquished and Gaia Power, Konami actually forgot to change the code on the card. So when you look at the codes of these cards, MRL029 and MRL096, you'd assume that you were looking at the North American versions. Uh, but both of these are actually European prints. Uh, and the only way to tell with these two cards is uh, firstly the cardstock, which if I compare it with another Gaia palette here, you can hopefully see that both on the front and the back, the colors and the texture are a little different. But the other way to tell is for both of these two cards, they are spell cards rather than magic cards in the case of Gaia Power. And in the case of Relinquished, uh, you can see it says equip spell card here rather than equip magic card, which is what it says on the North American version. The other interesting point with this set is that MRLE actually contains 27 additional cards which are not in the North American expansion. So Serpent Knight Dragon, which as the retail secret rare is the final card in the set, in the North American version it's MRL 103, but in the European version, since there are 27 extra cards, it's MRLE 130. And those 27 cards all came from LOB, SDY, and SDK, and they are the cards that were cut from the original European release. Um, and most of them were just printed as commons in this set, but there is one additional rare, which is MRL E129, and that's Pot of Greed. All right, so that being said, we can finally move on from Spell Ruler to the next expansion set to be released in Europe by Konami, which was Pharaoh's Servant. So, Konami were getting increasingly late with releases at this point, uh, and Pharaoh's Servant was released right around the end of 2003, which was well over a year after it had been released in America. And this was actually to be the final expansion set distributed by Konami in Europe, due to increasing complaints by players across Europe about how far behind the TCG was compared to America. And just to put that in perspective, Pharaoh's Servant was released in Europe about the same time as Dark Crisis was released in America. And none of those other sets were legal here, uh, including even things like Starter Deck Joey and Pegasus, uh, all the tournament pack releases, and other promotional sets. Uh, all of those cards were not legal for tournament play here, since they hadn't been released in an official European expansion. So Konami eventually agreed, because of all these things, to hand over control of the TCG to Upper Deck at the start of 2004. And that was just as the set LONE was being printed. And after this handover took place, pretty much the first thing that Upper Deck did was to cease production of all cards in the European facility. As a result, Labyrinth of Nightmare European Edition is easily the rarest of the original European releases, especially in Unlimited, where production was ceased pretty much as soon as it had begun. Now, Upper Deck still distributed the set as planned in March of 2004, but after that, they immediately moved all printing operations for European cards to the USA for the next year or so. And so that the TCG in Europe could catch up with America in terms of which cards were legal, they also imported unlimited English boxes of all the intervening sets. So that's Legacy of Darkness, Pharaonic Guardian, Magician's Force, and Dark Crisis to fill in the demand. And also made a few first edition IOC boxes for distribution in Europe at the same time since IOC came out more or less at the same time as Labyrinth of Nightmare European Edition came out, and Upper Deck took over at that time. Now, the reason why there are no foreign first edition European cards in existence between Legacy of Darkness and Invasion of Chaos is because Upper Deck did not bother with a fresh print run of any of those sets, but rather they just moved the unsold English boxes of these sets from America to Europe. And all of the unlimited foreign cards which do exist from these sets are later reprints from GX Blisters. Um, so 
For example, in the Gladiator's Assault blister, they reprinted Dark Crisis. Before I move on to talking about the Upper Deck era, I thought I should just quickly run through the handful of non-expansion sets which Konami did release for Europe during their short time in charge of the game. So the first of these was the European release of Tournament Pack 1, which came out right around the same time as Labyrinth of Nightmare. I believe it came out actually a little bit before, but again, the information is not out there on the internet as to the exact release date, so it's hard to say. Uh, this set was an exact reprint of the North American version, so it's the 30 card set with 5 hollows, 10 rares, and the rest commons. Um, but unfortunately, when Upper Deck took over, they scrapped the next few tournament packs in order to try and catch up with the TCG in America. So TP2, TP3, and TP4 were never released in Europe. And the next tournament pack set to be released was Tournament Pack 5, which came out alongside the release in North America. Uh, and the English cards for that set all have the prefix EN, even the ones which were distributed in Europe, because by that time Upper Deck had done away with the North American-European distinction in terms of how the cards were labeled. In addition to Tournament Pack 1, Konami also released a handful of video game promos in Europe. They made a lot fewer of these than Upper Deck did in America, and some games were released without promos when they had promos in the USA, such as Dark Duel Stories and Forbidden Memories. Of the other sets, some of them had the same promos as America, so for example the set of Duelist of the Roses is exactly the same in both versions. But other sets, they actually switched the promos up. So you should recognize these three as the second wave of Dark Duel Stories promos, but in Europe they were actually from the game Stairway to the Destined Duel. Uh, and the EDS promos from America came out instead in the Sacred Cards game in Europe. Uh, and for some reason, the promos didn't actually match up between languages. So, for example, DOR came with the normal promos in English, but in the Spanish release, it actually came with the original three DDS promos, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, and Exodia. And TFK in Spanish also came with a completely different set of promos which include the infamous super rare printings of uh, Sinister Serpent and Harpy's Feather Duster. And the last couple of promos which were released in Europe with the E prefix are the original Duelist League promos. Uh, and again, these are different cards to the ones they actually released in America, and not many people know about these. Uh, but Konami did actually run a Duelist League briefly in 2003, and that's where these promos come from. All right, so coming back to the Upper Deck era, which I mentioned before, the first phase of that lasted from Ancient Sanctuary to Flaming Eternity, and for all of those sets, English and foreign boxes were made in the USA for distribution in Europe. Um, and for SOD to FET, those boxes were made without the hobby retail distinction that the boxes designed for distribution in the USA had, which is why for all of those sets there are three different codes for each box, one hobby, one retail, and one which contains a combination of both. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a lot. Uh, and of course if you had any questions about anything I've said in this video or suggestions for a future video, uh, just leave them down below in the comments and I'll always do my best to get back to everyone. And stay tuned for the next video in this series when I'm going to be moving on to talking about the GX era of European cards.